Menstruation is a natural and normal process that has been a part of human life since the beginning of time. However, the way in which menstruation was perceived and treated has varied significantly throughout history. In this video, we will explore what menstruation was like during the medieval period. What did women do in a world that was ruled by men and menstruation was a big taboo subject. Hi, and welcome to History Uncovered. Subscribe to our channel to support us. During medieval times, menstruation was viewed as a shameful and unclean process. Women who menstruated were often considered impure and were segregated from society during their menstrual periods. This was especially true for women who lived in monasteries or convents, where menstruation was seen as a sign of sin. The Christian church played a significant role in shaping the attitudes towards menstruation during medieval times. According to Christian teachings, Menstruation was a punishment for Eve's disobedience in the Garden of Eden. This belief was reinforced by the Bible, which referred to menstruating women as unclean and impure. As a result, menstruation was considered a sin, and women were made to feel ashamed of their bodies and their natural bodily function. During the Middle Ages, medical knowledge about menstruation was limited, and many misconceptions about it persisted. Menstruation was seen as a mysterious and often frightening phenomenon. It was often associated with witchcraft or other supernatural beliefs. Some medical texts from the Middle Ages suggested that menstruation was caused by an excess of blood in the body and that it needed to be bled off in order to restore balance. This led to the practice of bloodletting, which was often used to treat menstrual problems. Menstruation was sometimes thought to be linked to the phases of the moon, and women were advised to avoid certain activities during specific lunar phases. There was a belief that menstrual blood was toxic and could cause illness or death. This led to the practice of menstrual seclusion, in which women were kept separate from others during their periods. Overall, medical knowledge about menstruation during the Middle Ages was limited, and many misconceptions about it persisted for centuries. It wasn't until the modern era that a more accurate understanding of menstruation began to emerge. A big difference is that medieval women had fewer periods than today's women. The reason for this is threefold. First, although the average age of puberty then is not much different than today, between 12 and 14 years of age, women reached menopause earlier, often in their late 30s. Second, fewer medieval women had regular monthly periods. Poor nutrition and hard work meant that many women had low body fat. A woman needs to have some amount of body fat or her reproductive system slows down and menstruation ceases. Today, this is only problematic for girls suffering from eating disorders or competitive athletes like distance runners or gymnasts. Lastly, mothers in the Middle Ages typically had more children and breastfed their children longer. Breastfeeding stymied menstruation. All this means that, over the course of her lifetime, medieval women had vastly fewer periods to contend with than today's females. Unlike today, where there are a variety of menstrual products available, women during medieval times had limited options for managing their menstrual flow. For most women, their menstrual blood was collected using cloth or rags, which were washed and reused. This practice was not only unhygienic, but also uncomfortable and often led to infections. Women who could afford it sometimes used more expensive materials such as linen or silk to collect their menstrual blood. However, this was only available to the wealthy and most women had to make do with what they had. In some cases, women used moss or grass as a menstrual absorbent, but this was not a widely used practice. They used a type of moss that is still very common in England today and is remarkably absorbent. It was used as stuffing for menstrual pads, as toilet paper, and as a battlefield dressing for wartime wounds. The popular name for this moss is blood moss. Etymologists contend that this moniker comes from its use in battlefield first aid. This account, of course, oozes of heroism and masculinity, but is more likely the case that blood moss earned its name by helping medieval women with their uniquely feminine problem. Whether they chose a homemade pad or a homemade tampon, medieval women worried about leaks and stains. This is a main reason why red was a popular color for medieval petticoats. The scarlet color was not only fashionable and decorative, but also functional as to disguise the menzies. So, instead of having the luxury of visiting the drugstore to pick up supplies for the monthly visitor, medieval women turned to nature, or she simply wore red. There were also some early forms of menstrual products that were used during the Middle Ages, although they were not widely available. 
For example, in some parts of Europe, women used a menstrual belt, which was made of leather or cloth and tied around the waist to hold a pad in place. Another method was the use of a menstrual cup, which was made of glass or metal and inserted into the vagina to collect menstrual blood. However, these methods were not widely used and were only available to a few women. Overall, menstrual hygiene during the Middle Ages was a challenging and uncomfortable experience for women. The lack of available options meant that many women had to make do with cloth or rags, which were often inadequate and unhygienic. It was not until the 19th century that modern menstrual products, such as disposable pads and tampons, became widely available, providing women with greater comfort and convenience during their menstrual periods. In addition to the stigma surrounding menstruation, there were also several taboos associated with it during medieval times. For example, it was believed that women who menstruated could spoil food because wine to turn sour and harm animals. As a result, women were often forbidden from cooking or working with food during their menstrual periods. There were also beliefs that menstrual blood had magical properties and could be used for good or evil. It was believed that menstrual blood could be used to cure diseases, create love potions, or cast spells. However, these beliefs were not accepted by everyone, and many women who were accused of using menstrual blood in this way were persecuted and even executed for witchcraft. During medieval times, there were few medical treatments available for menstrual disorders. Women who experienced painful periods or heavy bleeding were often treated with herbal remedies or bloodletting. Bloodletting was a common medical practice during the medieval period, and it was believed to balance the body's humors and cure various ailments. One popular remedy for menstrual disorders was the use of pennyroyal, a herb that was believed to stimulate menstruation and relieve pain. However, the use of pennyroyal was also associated with significant risks, including kidney and liver damage and even death. Well, we are glad that we live in the 21st century. What about you? Would you want to be a woman in the Middle Ages? Let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching to History Uncovered. Don't forget to subscribe for more interesting videos.